Hello people, in this video let us look at aphakia. So basically aphakia, it is coming under this errors of refraction and accommodation. Under uh, hypermetropia you are getting aphakia. So just look at the location where we are, we are studying the errors of refraction accommodation. Under the ref, uh, refraction errors you have under hypermetropia, one of the causes is aphakia. Aphakia means what guys? Aphakia means something is like not there, right? Aphakia. So basically here, what is not there? The lens, the lens, the crystalline lens in the eye itself is not in the place where it has to be. So it is missing. So basically where is the lens? So you know if this is the structure of the eye, here you have the cornea guys and this is where you have the lens. So this lens guy is not here. So this will become what? Aphakia. Okay. So you know what aphakia is now, right? So basically, hypermetropia can be caused because of aphakia. Fakia actually refers to the lens. So aphakia, no lens. So this much have you understood? So basically, you have understood what aphakia is. It is the absence of the crystalline lens from the pupillary area. Okay. And it produces what? Hypermetropia. So hypermetropia means what? So that much do you know? So, hypermetropia can be caused by a lot of things, guys. Like axial hypermetropia is there, right? Then curvatural hypermetropia because uh, curvature of cornea or lens, something is the curvature is not proper. Index hypermetropia, positional hypermetropia, consecutive hypermetropia. So, one of the causes of hypermetropia is aphakia. So, now why does aphakia itself happen? So, in this video, guys, we will look at aphakia only, right? So basically, aphakia, we will look at the causes of aphakia, we will look at the optics of aphakia, we will look at the clinical features of uh, aphakia and then we will look at the treatment, management and treatment of aphakia. Okay. Shall we get started with the causes, guys? Okay. Here we are. So causes, why does aphakia happen? Why do you think a person doesn't have lens? Obviously because it's congenital. The person was born without the lens. So it is a, a rare condition. A person can congenitally have aphakia. Okay. So then surgical aphakia. So basically the doctor himself has removed the lens, right? This is usually very common. Surgical aphakia. Okay. Aphakia due to absorption of lens matter. So basically uh, after a trauma, right, what happens, the lens matter itself can get absorbed by the body, okay. Then traumatic extrusion, this sounds very scary guys. So basically, uh, there is extrusion of the lens from the eye, okay, and again it is rare because of trauma, imagine. Then posterior dislocation, what is behind the eye guys? No, 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 not behind the eye. What is behind the eye, the lens, the lens of the eye, what is behind the lens? So, you know that there are types of, there is aqueous humor and vitreous humor, right? This is vitreous humor. You can call it as vitreous itself, vitreous. So, if the lens comes back to the vitreous, so there is posterior dislocation of the lens in vitreous. So, this can cause optical aphakia, okay? So, you understood, right, what posterior dislocation of uh, the lens is, which is causing aphakia, okay? So, this will cause what? Where is the lens? First of all, it is in the vitreous and it causes optical aphakia. Okay. Now, let's move on guys. So, we are done with the causes of aphakia. Can you tell uh, why obviously somebody is born without a uh, lens itself, uh, then somebody surgically the doctor removed or the lens got injured and the body absorbed the lens matter or some trauma punched you and the lens came out posterior dislocation into the vitreous. Okay. So, you have understood the causes of aphakia. Now, let us move on to optics of aphakia. So, what will be the optical change, right, after removal of crystal lens? If there is no lens at all, then what will be there? So, you know, obviously, hypermetropia and hypermetropia is not just normal hypermetropia. It's a very high degree of hypermetropia. First of all, understand hypermetropia. Now, what they are doing here? They are trying to correct it with a spectacles or something like that. 
So they have put another lens here and they are trying to focus it exactly here. So this is correction for hypermetropic eye. Okay. Now the total power of eye is reduced they are saying. Total power of eye is what? Reduced. So what is the total power of eye? Normally it is what? Plus 60 diopter. Okay. Plus 60 diopter is reduced to about plus 44 diopter. Now what is this? Let's try to understand this statement. So first of all, you know what focal length is guys. See this is focusing here, right? So this is the focal length, right? This becomes the focal length. Now 1 by focal length, that is the reciprocal of focal length will give you the power of the lens. That is the diopter, okay? Now let us say if uh, diopter has to be more, focal length should be less. So our eye is let us say able to focus this much. Normal eye is able to focus this much, right? So the focal length of our eye is less. So the diopter is more. So normal is 60 diopter. Right? Normal is what? 60 diopter. Now what will happen? The focal length has increased. So the diopter will decrease. So for this guy, the diopter has decreased to 44 diopters. This is what I am understanding. Think about all the physics you have studied, right? For entrance exam. Now it has, you have to implement all that. And you have to be telling us exactly about this power and diopter and focal length and all that. So guys see, normal uh, something like this we have put, the focal length was less, the diopter was more, now the focal length has increased, diopter has decreased. Whatever you know, the lens, power of the lens has reduced. Okay, so we, we are done with this one. Total power of eye is reduced. This one we are done with now. Now let us look at the next one. Anterior focal point, what will happen? Posterior focal point, what will happen? So as you guessed guys, this is the anterior focal point and this is the posterior focal point. Look at this. Now we are telling you that this guy can focus easily on far objects, not on near objects. So where do you think the focal point will go? Anterior focal point, what do you think will happen? Normal is 15.7. Okay. So now where will it become? Now it will become 23.2. Okay. This is anterior focal point is becoming more. He is able to see far things. Correct? No. Did you understand? Good. Now, what about posterior focal point, guys? So, instead of falling here, the image is falling here, right? For him now, the near image. So, what is happening to posterior fo focal point? Now, uh, normal was about 24 millimeter. Okay. And now it is becoming 31 millimeter. So easy. So, 7 millimeter, it went off behind the eyeball. Papa. 7 millimeter, it went off extra behind the eyeball. Now have you understood this? Let's put this. See here. It's millimeter guys. Everywhere it's millimeter, 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 millimeter. Okay. So anterior, uh, anterior focal point has become more. Posterior focal point also has become more. Okay. Guys, we are done with anterior focal point and posterior focal point. Let's look at the last thing here. Accommodation lost fully. Now what is accommodation? Guys, look at this. Now, Accommodation means let the image be far, let the image be near. Okay. The lens is trying to accommodate. The lens is changing the shape. You can see the lens is changing the shape to make sure that the image falls here. So you, you know how uh, you are able to focus on the near object and the far object because the lens is trying to accommodate. But now there is no lens, so accommodation won't be there. So you understood, no guys? Now look at this. So, what are the optic changes, optical changes in an aphakic eye? First of all, what, are, what is there? Hypermetrophia of high degree. Total power of eye is reduced. Anterior focal point increases. Posterior focal point increases. Accommodation is fully lost. So, we are done with the optics of aphakic eye. Okay. So, now next what we have to look at. In the next video, we will look at the clinical features like the symptoms, defective vision, erythropsia, synopsia, right? Some problem with the colors there. Signs uh, like what you will find, you will find limbal corneal scar, you will see something in the anterior chamber that is going to be more deep. Iridodonesis, then you will see that the pupil is jet black in color. Perkin J image test, you can see only two images, right? Normally you will see four images. Fundus examination, you will see hypermetropic small disc, 
retinoscopy, auto refractometry, you will see high hypermetropia again. Then in the next video, we will see the treatment of aphakia, what and all they will do. Basically, simple spectacles, contact lens can solve the problem or inter intraocular lens implantation like a artificial lens like this can be implemented in the eye. Then you have refractive corneal surgery. Guys, so come back. Uh, let's continue in the next video on the clinical features and treatment of aphakia. Thank you.